Metal Jesus here, and I'm back again with another video. But this time, it's a companion to the Game Room Tour video I did a little while ago. You guys love that video, but a lot of you had specific questions about how I connect all of these consoles up. You want more details. Well, that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to attempt to show you exactly how I hook up all these different consoles, all the different wires, all the different switch boxes, everything. I think you guys are going to like it. Let's take a look. I have two televisions in my game room and we're gonna start with the HD TV and how I configure all the consoles on the right hand side of my game room here. The majority of these consoles right here do composite video. That is the one yellow cable that a lot of these consoles do. Not all of them. You see I have an Atari 2600 here, but it's not set up. We're gonna cover that in a little bit. But for the majority of these, what I need to do is get that one yellow cable, that one yellow video cable to upscale to HD. So how do I do it? Well, let's follow the chain of events here. Let's go to the Sega CDX. This is a Sega Genesis with a CD built in, and this does composite out. So let's put the game in. So I send that signal to a switcher. This is a composite switcher that has labels for all the different systems that are currently set up for it. So you see the Saturn, the CDX, the N64, the Sega Master System there, and I switch back and forth. The video of that goes out to this Enco Products HDMI converter. This takes composite and then upscales to HDMI. And it has a little switch to do either 720p or 1080p. But because I have a couple different HDMI devices, I send it to this HDMI switcher here. And that way I can have the Retron 5, which I'll cover in a second, as well as my Elgato game capture already set up and ready to go. Now you may have noticed I didn't send the audio to this device. I actually send that straight to my Mackie mixing board. And I do that because I wanna have a bit more control over the overall volume. Also, I happen to have really nice studio monitors. I have these KRK studio reference monitors here that make everything sound just fantastic. So I try to send as much as I can to those speakers. But at the end of the day, it upscales to my HDTV, as you can see here, and it looks pretty good. It's not the same as an actual CRT because it's, it's upscaling those old pixels and that old resolution, but it's definitely doable and it looks pretty good. For a lot of people, the Retron 5, myself included, is a really nice option for upscaling a lot of your original games. And I kind of want to cover that a little bit more in depth here because it's a nice option for a lot of people. It supports Famicom, NES, Super Famicom, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Mega Drive, and it even has support for upscaling your Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games, as well as you can use the original controllers. I know I've mentioned this system a lot, but it's nice because it really does look fantastic on a modern TV. And like before, I send it to this HDMI switcher so I can go back and forth pretty easily. Now there's an entire generation of consoles through the 2000s that supported component video. That's where the video signal is divided into three different cables. And that's a really nice option for me. So I have the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation 3, the Wii, the Xbox 360, and the original Xbox all going out to component. That component video is divided by and switched between these two component switchers here. So one of them is mono price and the other one is gigaware. And the only reason why I chose these is simply because it worked out the best for what I need. And then finally, what I have also in here is the PSP. So a lot of people don't realize that the, the PSP 3000 will also output to component video, but there are some exceptions and the Dreamcast is one of them. So the Dreamcast will output to VGA which is kind of interesting. I think it's the only console that does this, but my TV happens to support that. So I just needed to get this little box and basically it allows it to output to VGA, which is a really nice resolution on this TV. And then there is the Panasonic 3DO, which has the option for doing S-Video. Again, my TV supports that. 
And then to wrap up this side of my game room, I have a futon here and I like to kick back and listen to music. So I have two options. I have an input for an iPod or iPhone as well as my turntable. And those are all plugged into those Mackie mixing board coming out to those studio monitor speakers and it all sounds fantastic. Now let's go to the other side of my game room where I have just a massive old school CRT for two reasons really. One of those reasons is I love light gun games and old light guns do not work on modern HD TVs. So I had to have one of these old school TVs to do that. And that's primarily what my PlayStation 1 here is set up to do. But I also have a lot of old consoles like the original Atari and 7800 set up here, as well as the Intellivision, the ColecoVision, and also the Turbo Graphics. The problem is that if the console's really old from like the 70s or 80s, it probably does RF out. And RF is this really old standard where it's one cable for the video and the audio and most new modern televisions don't even have an input for it. So you need these old school CRTs. For me, I just have a very simple switcher for it. So this is where I can also hook up my original NES if I want to and that sort of stuff and just switch back and forth between those. In addition to that, I also have a composite switcher, very similar to the, to the, the one I have over on the right hand side. But again, this is just for like say the PlayStation 1 or also I happen to have here um, an original VHS and a DVD player just in case I want it. All right, well that's how I connect most of my consoles to my TV and stereo. But if you have further questions, go ahead and post in the comments below and I'd be happy to give you some more specifics. And speaking of, every game room is slightly different. So, you know, my solutions may not be what works best for you, depending on what you have and what hardware you got, you know, what TVs and stereos and things like that. So love to know what solutions you guys came up with and maybe we can help each other out. As always, I want to thank you for watching my channel and thanks for subscribing. Take care. If you happen to have missed that game room tour video, well, you are in luck because I happen to have it on my YouTube channel. So check it out.